people involved in the gold and silver markets, and I'm using air quotes, the paper prices here in the U.S. for a long time, a decade or more. They have been waiting for a smoking gun of evidence and proof or admission. They have been waiting for a bombshell of information like what happened today when the LBMA admitted, and they called it an accounting error, I would call it accounting fraud, they admitted to overstating the physical silver they held by 3,300 tons during the March silver squeeze. So that's an 11% overestimation, according to Bullion Star, which responded to this article from Kitco on Twitter. So Kitco reported this, but the rumors of shenanigans like this have been going on for a long time. In the past, I think it was six or seven years ago, approximately, JP Morgan was fined by the CFTC for lying about their commitment of traders' figures and how much metal they had in the vault. So there's always been fines. JP Morgan had to pay a $928 million fine for one form of precious metal market manipulation in 2020 called spoofing. But there's other different ways that the precious metal market is manipulated here, both in the US and in London on the LBMA. And one of those is by overstating how much physical gold and silver is actually in the vaults, and then how much is unencumbered. There's multiple counterparty claims, all these paper leases and swaps. That's probably the biggest problem. So there's some other analysis there from a tweet from someone who's been covering this more that SLV probably leased the metal. Again, these shenanigans have been going on for a very, very long time. If you don't wanna take part in this, you could just buy physical metal if you're buying it just for a much higher paper price in the near term, this is not going to help you. Over the long run, the more people that we educate about how the paper precious metal markets are manipulated and managed, the bullion banks and COMEX and LBMA and a lot of the other mints that are involved now, according to the detectives, the internet detectives, checking out what's going on with the Perth Mint and Kitco and even what looks like Euro Pacific metal that is selling unallocated what paper certificates. So all these shenanigans going on proves that there is no real price discovery for precious metals here in the US for gold and silver. But unfortunately, even though I would say that this is accounting fraud, the odds are that almost no one or probably no one will go to prison for it. So it's good that this information is out there in public. A lot of people like me have been suspecting that this is the case for many, many years now. Eric Sprott has talked about this many, many times on different podcasts and interviews, and I had an in-person conversation with him back in 2014 up in the Sprott headquarters in Toronto about these very subjects, about how they always lie about how much metal is actually in the vaults. It's always overstated. This time, they say it's only overstated by 11%. I have a feeling that it was overstated by a lot more than that. But this is what they get away with. And then they have their apologists like Jeffrey Christian and others go on TV for them and call us names. Finally, if you like this content and want to chip in, it's only $5 a month to sign up for my Patreon. There are over 150 articles, charts, and audio podcasts behind the paywall, including five new articles in the last two and a half weeks on a lot of interesting topics, including a very simplified version of how to beat stagflate tax and lie or worse, if hyperinflation does come to the US. So definitely check out my Patreon. It's only five bucks a month. It's probably one of the best deals out there on the internet for the amount of research and analysis that is behind the paywall. I don't think anyone has a better value for only five bucks a month.